Modulator. Welcome to this embedded system design and IoT masterclass series. I warmly welcome you to this session. Uh, thank, thank you for your time and thanks for coming. Uh, first, I would like to welcome the early comers first. Okay. Uh, welcome Ankita, welcome Uday, welcome Wilson, welcome Mark, welcome Lakshan, welcome Rajeshri, welcome uh, Mohan, welcome and uh, Raj, welcome. If I'm audible, just type yes in the chat box. If I'm audible, just type loud and clear in the chat box. Okay. Naharat Deepak Singh, welcome. Jaya, welcome. Aryan, welcome. If I'm audible, just type yes in the chat box. Okay. So is my screen visible? Is my screen visible? Okay. So I'll, I'll increase my volume. I'll increase my volume. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Is my screen visible? Just type visible in the chat box. Okay. I'm waiting for the chat. Is my screen visible? Okay. Visible in the chat box. Just type visible in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. So, okay, so uh, why 30 day challenge? Okay, why we have kept this 30 day challenge? We are conducting a lot of 30 day challenge for the past two years, uh, right from COVID. Uh, because, like, we strongly believe that if you want to form any habit, you need 30 days. Okay, anything you do consistently for 30 days, it will become as a habit. We want you to form learning as a habit. Okay, that's the reason like we conduct third day challenge often like every month we conduct one or two third day challenge just to form habits as, because we believe that self learning is very very essential for uh, for your growth. Okay, so we train both on skill set as well as on mindset. Okay, so one slide we'll be dedicating for mindset because we strongly believe that mindset is very very essential for your success. 80% of your growth is depending upon your mindset. Okay, so uh, so this program like it's going to be more uh, engaging okay so you can do the group activity at discord so i'll be providing activity as well as assignment on discord you can submit the activity and assignment on discord and the stream is uh, live on linkedin as well as on uh, facebook as well as on youtube okay so if all the source codes will be provided in discord so uh, we will provide you the discord link later okay so uh, why do you want to learn embedded system design okay if if you want to get a job, just type J4 in the chat box. If you want to upskill yourself, okay, just type U in the chat box. Or if you want to learn the new stuff, okay. If you're actively looking for a job, just type J in the chat box. If you're an entrepreneur, just type E in the chat box, okay. Just type E in the chat box. I would like to go through your chat. Okay, I see a lot of upskill, lot of job. Okay, there's I see very less of entrepreneurs here. Okay, most of them is for looking for job and uh, upskill. Okay, so okay, so can you commit for three days? Like just type I commit in the chat box. Like because how you do everything is how you do anything. Okay, if you want to grow big, uh, like grow bigger in your life. You have to commit, you have to stay committed on your journey. Just type, I commit for 30 days. Okay. How you do everything is how you do anything. So take notes. One idea can change your life. So take notes and uh, I'll just give you a summarize of what you will learn on this 30 days. Okay. So week one is all about embedded system design. So we are going to cover up ARM Cortex M4 based on STM32. Okay, so we'll be covering up STM32 F411 series. So day one is all about introduction, introduction to embedded system design and how to choose the right processor for your embedded system design. That's day one. Day two is about introduction to ARM Cortex M4 architecture. It's a 32 bit processor and how to blink an LED. Okay, how to blink an LED. It's a practical session. So you have to install STM32 Cube IDE today. So the activity is there on Discord. I'll share you later. Day three is all about UART. Okay, how to write UART programming because UART is essential for serial communication. 
okay day 4 it's about bluetooth home automation okay bluetooth home automation using stm3411 it's a project mini project and day 5 how to send data to the thingspeak cloud okay thingspeak cloud is from uh, mathworks so how to uh, how to interface esp esp8266 with stm3411 series and how to send data to the cloud okay that's day 5 it's, again it's a mini project so day 6 like uh, day 6 is all about it's all about 8051 so week 2 is we will be focusing on 8051 uh, like introduction to 8051 and architecture as well as on kale how to create a project on kale okay day 7 is how to interface switch relays to uh, 8051 we will be covering up day 8 is uart and spy serial peripheral interface and day 9 we will be covering up lcd display and how to interface lcd display and how i2c works day 10 we will be covering up 8051 mini project it's a it's a bluetooth again it's a mini project so you will be learning how to build a home automation project using bluetooth in stm32 f411 as well as on 851 okay if you love this curriculum just type love this on the chat box or uh, like just type the hot emoji on the chat box okay if you love this curriculum okay week 3 is all about arm 7 like introduction to uh, introduction to arm 7 lpc2149 and how to blink an led Day 12, we will be uh, covering up how to interface switch and relay. Day 13 is how to interface UART, how to write a program on UART and SPY. And day 14 is LCD, how to interface LCD with ARM7 LPC2148. Day 15 is a mini project on LPC2148. Okay, so IoT based weather monitoring systems. Okay, so that you will be learning the basics of ARM7 and one mini project. Okay, so week 4 is about Cortex M4 based on nxp like lpc 4088 we'll be covering up the, the lpc 4088 architecture and how to blink led we'll be using kale and day 17 is how to interface switch and relay on lpc 4088 it's a 32 bit processor okay day 19 is about lcd and i2c and day 20 is about uh, a project okay we'll be using zigbee and lora for temperature monitoring okay how to uh, like how to send uh, how to monitor temperature via wireless using LoRa and Zigbee. Okay, so that's week four. Uh, week five is about PIC, like it's from microchip, peripheral interrupt controller. Day 21 is introduction to PIC architecture. Day 22, like how to create a project on MPLAB IDE as well as how to blink LEDs. Okay, day 23 is how to interface switch and relay and PWM. And day 24 is how to interface like UART. Okay, right, how to write a program for UART and SPY in PIC microcontroller. And day 25 is LCD and i2c okay so there is no mini project here so pick like we will be using pick 16 of 8778 okay week 6 is about node mcu and asp32 you can use either node mcu or asp32 introduction will be covering up day 26 we will be covering up introduction to node mcu as well as asp32 it's a dual core and day 27 like how to blink an led how to interface switch uh, how to interface a relay on uart on node mcu as well as asp32 28 day 28 is about iot temperature data logging it's a project and 29 is a home automation project using esp 866 okay so how to how to control devices from anywhere in this world okay that's we'll be covering up on day 29 day 30 is the conclusion so this time you'll be receiving an internship certificate it's not a certificate of participation you'll be getting an internship certificate i just repeat you'll get an internship certificate provided you have to attend minimum 28 days okay 28 days and you have to do the activity Okay, if you do not do assignments and activity, then there is no certificates. Okay, you have to do activity and assignments at least for 28 days. So the materials required for this uh, material for this course for this 30-day internship is you need a STM32 F411 nuclear board. I advise. Okay, if you are not able to purchase all the boards, just purchase only the STM32 F411 nuclear board because you can learn. It's a 32-bit microcontroller. It has an onboard uh, emulator. Okay, onboard debugger. So that you can you can debug uh, you can debug uh, the processor okay whereas the other boards 15 board arm 7 and lpc 408 you need an external debugger okay so i suggest if you're not able to purchase all the boards just purchase stm32 f411 nuclear board and logic analyzer uh, esp8266 okay and dhd 11 sensor and adxl345 for spy and i2c okay and led 330 ohms and relays and hc 05 bluetooth module okay if uh, so if it is clear for you 
if the hard work required is clear for you just type clear in the chat box if you love the curriculum uh, just just give this heart emoji on the chat box okay okay so thank you so much okay so self investment is the best investment okay if you think that you don't have money for investing for the lab okay for the hardware equipments okay uh, like you just check out like how much you invest for entertainment how much you invest for uh, travel okay how much you invest for snacks okay uh, self i want you to invest some money for it not necessarily you have to purchase from us you can purchase from anywhere okay but i want you to purchase and practice okay so self the best investment you can do is investing on yourself more you invest on yourself more the money you can make okay your growth depends upon the self learning okay so uh, if you got this awareness just type awareness in the chat box okay self investment is the best investment so uh, so i want to go with a quote i want to start with a quote like you can read hundreds of book for swimming okay but you will never get guts unless you dive in and practice this is applicable for anything like even here like if you attend only on live it's waste of time the learning is only 20% or 30% okay only when you practice only when you purchase the kits and when you practice the learning you will be learning like 80% of the learning comes okay so if you agree with the statement just type a for agree in the chat box okay just type agree in the chat box you can read hundreds of book for swimming but you will never get guts unless you dive in and practice okay so i want you to purchase this hardware and i want you to practice so just type p for permission to introduce about myself okay just type p for permission to introduce about myself my name is mk jeevarajan i have 19 plus years of experience uh, i started my uh, company in the year 2004 uh, so far like i have built 300 plus products in house design products for for my own company so basically like a pantech we manufacture development boards and lab we supply lab equipments for engineering colleges like we manufacture microcontroller boards dsp boards and fpga boards and um, the best product i designed is called brain sense which is a brain computer interface device uh, which allows you to read the eeg signal and convert that data to a meaningful form and this brain brain sense has selected as a top five innovation products in india in the year 2015 uh, from nasca okay so far i have generated 70 plus crores of revenue for my own company like uh, the com it is completely bootstrap we don't have any venture funding so my primary expertise is on microcontrollers dsps and fpgas if you want to connect with me uh, i have my linkedin link in the uh, uh, chat box you can send me a connection request i am happy to connect and happy to help okay if you have any doubts just ping me on message on linkedin i am active on linkedin okay so uh, it's i am very happy to connect and happy to help okay so uh, coming to the announcement the attendance link will be available at the end of the session okay so you have to be patient if you don't have patience just leave today leave leave the session okay uh, it will it will be available only for uh, for two to three months i'll give you time for fill this attendance okay so minimum attendance required to get the free internship certificate is 28 days okay we have wait of two days so so if you if you have any problems like in attending a session like you can get uh, like two days of time okay but you have to attend minimum 28 days to get a free internship certificate so the link for today the link will be valid for one hour but from tomorrow onwards it will be available only for two to three minutes okay we'll be closing the uh, link in the session so you have to be present on live you, you, we we didn't we are not allowing that you can come and watch later and you can put you can sign up the attendance form it's not like that okay so for three months like we also have a three months internship certificate program so anyone who wants to attend for them no need to uh, no need to submit the attendance form all you so we'll be accessing your attendance from the portal okay from the learning portal i'll share you later okay so for recorded video streaming for some sessions i'll be using recorded video streaming especially for the hardware sessions okay to improve the learning experience so video will be removed from youtube after three to five days so you have to go through the video uh within three or five days okay please don't download the video just go within the just go through the video within three to five days and take notes be active on facebook discord and linkedin okay so i want you to like i i want uh, like i want like uh, I, I want you to promote yourself like on linkedin 
I want you to market yourself on LinkedIn. So, uh, so be active on Discord in submitting assignments as well as be active on LinkedIn so that if you looking for job, if you get some inquiries, okay, so that will be a uh, that will be one takeaway from this session. Okay, so if this is clear, just type C for clear in the chat box. Clear in the chat box. If this is clear, if the announcement is clear, just type clear in the chat box. So if you're ready, just type RTL, ready to learn on the chat box. If you're ready, just type RTL in the chat box, ready to learn. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. I'll share you. I will share you the link where to purchase. Okay. Just type RTL in the chat box. Ready to learn in the chat box. Okay. Okay. I want your super duper focus now. Okay. Just type RTL in the chat box. So, what is an embedded systems? It is a combination of both hardware and software with some mechanical parts to perform a specific task. Okay, so specific task is very very important. Otherwise, it it would be a general purpose system. Okay, if you if you like uh, if you take a desktop or laptop, it is not an embedded system. It's a general purpose system. Whereas embedded system is a system which do only a specific task. Just type any of the example for embedded system design on the chat box. It may be like. Uh, printer is an embedded system, induction stove, washing machine, okay, so whatever the things, even uh, the smart bulbs, okay, is an embedded system. So just type, what is the embedded system which have come across in your life? Just type that on the chat box, okay. So I just repeat, it is, it is a combination of hardware and software with some mechanical parts to perform a specific task, okay, so that is called an embedded system. Okay, so if the, if there is no specific task, then it is a general purpose system, okay, general purpose system, desktop. Uh, if you take laptop or PCs, personal computers is a general purpose system. It is not an embedded system. Okay, embedded system will do only the specific task. Okay, if you just type any of the uh, embedded system on the chat box. So coming to the classification of embedded systems, basically, like there are two types. One is hard real time, another is soft real time. Okay, so real time system means system which completes the task within a specific time is called a real time embedded system. Okay, if it is hard real time, missing a deadline may cause an havoc. That is a hard real time. For example, the nuclear reactor is a hard real time system. Soft real time system is a like uh, like a gaming controllers or soft real time systems. Okay, missing a deadline may degrade the performance. Okay, you may have a poor user experience. So that is called soft real time. Okay, I just repeat, real time embedded systems systems which complete the task within a specific deadline. Okay, it is called real time embedded systems. There are two types. One is hard real time, the other is soft real time. Hard real time means missing a deadline may cause an havoc. Okay, example is a nuclear reactor, is an or aircraft, or satellite. All these are hard real time system. Missing a deadline may cause an havoc. Soft real time is a game controllers like missing a deadline may, like it it will cause a, a poor user experience. Okay, it will degrade the performance of the system. Okay, that is called soft real time systems. Example is a game controllers. Okay. If this is clear, just type clear in the chat box. Okay. If this is clear, just type clear in the chat box. If you want me to repeat, just type RPT in the chat box. If you want me to repeat, just type RPT in the chat box. I'll go with the majority. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. Thank you. So few are asking repeat. Of few are asking repeat. Okay. I'll just repeat. I'll just repeat. Okay. I see a lot of repeats on the chat box. I'll just repeat. Okay, so in real, so coming to the real time embedded system design, okay, embedded system which complete a task within a specific deadline. Okay, so say for example, when you when you have a task and if it want to ex if you want to execute the task within one second, it will execute the task within one second. Okay, so that is called a real time embedded system. Okay, completing a task within a specific deadline is called a real time embedded system. There are two kinds of real time embedded system. One is hard real time. So missing a deadline, if the system misses the deadline, say for example, instead of executing one seconds, if it executes for two seconds, it may cause an havoc. That is a hard real-time systems. Okay. Examples in nuclear reactor and soft real-time system is like the gaming controllers. Okay. Missing a deadline will cause a poor user experience. Okay. It will degrade the performance of the system. That is called soft real-time systems. Okay. Examples of gaming controllers. Okay. So coming to the types of processors. 
okay there are different types of processes processors and controllers available uh, available in the market so you have to choose the right processor and controller for your ember system design whenever you design a product you have to choose the right processor or controller to your uh, to your product okay so only when you are aware of all type of processors and controllers you can choose which will be the better okay so i'll just give you a overview what are the types of processor and controllers available in the market you have microprocessors microcontrollers like in you have in microcontrollers you have 8 bit microcontroller 16 bit microcontroller and 32 bit microcontroller based upon the calculation okay how based upon the bit processing and you have dsps digital signal processors you have cplds and fpgas complex programmable logical devices and fpga for field programmable gate arrays and you have general purpose processor okay you have uh, uh, cpus and you have gpus graphic processing unit from nvidia but gpus are not standalone like you need a cpu embedded cpu okay and you have asic application specific integrated circuits okay and you have system on chip and you have tpu tensor processing units okay from core so microprocessors like you have Dallas Philips, Texas Instruments, these are the manufacturers, okay. You can go for a website called digikey.com and you can search for microcontrollers. You can see a lot of microcontrollers on the website, okay. So the site is digikey.com. So you can see a DSP processor, like DSP processor, the market is dominated by Texas Instruments and analog devices, okay. In CPLDs, the market is dominated by Xilinx, Altera, okay, and uh, like in uh, CPUs and GPUs, Intel, AMD and NVIDIA. Okay, so GPUs is like GPUs like NVIDIA and ASIC, you have Intel, Intel Movidia Stick. Uh, there are a lot of companies making ASIC, okay, and TPUs uh, from Coral and SOC like Qualcomm and Broadcom. Okay, these are the manufacturers. Okay, so we will go uh, step by step like what is the difference between microprocessor and what is the difference between microcontroller in the upcoming slide. So before I proceed, if this is clear, like the types of processors and control is clear just type clear in the chat box okay if you want me to repeat just type rpt in the chat box so if those who are viewing on linkedin so if you want if you're not clear like you can also view on youtube okay the youtube you can you can come to youtube pantax solutions uh, channel and you can view the live here okay is that clear just type clear in the chat box okay so thank you so much uh, thank you sumit thank you uh, okay I'm not able to, can you, TP is for tensor processing unit. Okay, Sathvik, Sathvik, Somo, TP stands for tensor processing units, okay, for machine learning. Okay, so thank you, like I can see a lot of FPJ stands for, FPJ is standalone, yes, Pratik, FPJ is standalone, field program getter is, yeah. So thank you. Okay. Okay. So let's let's start with microprocessor. So microprocessor and micro. Let's start with the difference between what is microprocessor and what is microcontroller. So in micro microprocessor, all the peripherals are external. Okay, it means all the peripherals will be a separate chip, integrated circuits, where you have to interface all these integrated circuits to make the embedded system design work. Okay, like if you take the peripherals, like UART peripherals like uh, the program memory and the data memory and like uh, everything like uh, A to C, A ADC, okay, timers, RTC, everything will be in separate chip. You have to interface, okay, 8085, uh, 8085, 8086 is an example for microprocessor, okay. So Pentium 4 is also a microprocessor. So you have to, you have to do a PCB design to make it work. Whereas in microcontroller, everything is on chip, on a single chip. Okay, like if you take 8051, it's a single chip, which has a CPU, which has a UART, which has a program memory, also the data memory and parallel port, the GPIOs and the timers, ADCs, control area network. Okay, all these are available on a single chip. Okay, so that's a microcontroller. So if, the, if that, that is, uh, so microprocessor, you have to interface everything, whereas microcontroller, everything is on chip, but it is limited. Okay. Like it will have limited GPIOs, limited program memory, limited data memory, and limited uh, like limited uh, computations. Okay, so if you are implementing a simple application like door lock, then microcontroller you can go with the microcontroller. It will be very cheaper. You can purchase the microcontroller for forty rupees. Okay, uh, eight eight zero five one the Novatar microcontroller comes for forty rupees. When you go for a bulk purchase, 
you can even purchase for 5 rupees or 10 rupees okay so that is possible so uh, whereas in dsp okay so is that clear the my, the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller is clear i just repeat microprocessor you have all the peripherals as external you have to interface with the cpu with the with the microprocessor okay uh, so you, you have to like you want like you want rtc and timers everything will be a separate chip okay will be a separate chip where you have to interface that uh, to make it as a board to make it work okay whereas in microcontroller everything will be on chip okay like if you take an 8020 it is an integrated circuits where it has a cpu it has program memory it has a data memory timers adc controller network parallel port you what will be there okay if this is clear just type clear in the chat box okay just type clear in the chat box apart from this you have based on the based on the processing like it has a, you have 8 bit microcontroller 16 bit microcontroller 32 bit microcontroller okay thank you thank you so much We'll share you a harsh thing like we'll share you the Discord link. Just wait, just listen this class. Okay, I have a separate slide for sharing the Discord link. Okay, okay. The next is DSP, Digital Signal Processors. Okay, so DSP, Digital Signal Processors are built for doing complex mathematical calculation. Okay, if you want to do a complex mathematical calculation, then you can choose a DSP processor. It, it is meant for hard real-time constraints okay it can run dsp can run applications with the hard real-time constraints and it can it has capability to process infinite continuous data streams so what is infinite continuous data streams you can interface a camera okay which has uh, like where you will get a feed from the uh, camera or you can interface a mic okay so that it can process okay so you can interface a mic and you can interface uh, uh, the camera which you will have the infinite dsp has a capability to process the continuous data streams it has special peripheral interface okay it has some special interface to interface a high speed adc and high speed dac so that it can process this infinite continuous data streams okay in dsp also there are two types one is fixed point dsps and another is floating point dsps floating point dsp can do a floating point calculations which will be which will have more accuracy okay if you want to do a image processing like comp like like if you are if you want to have a complex uh, mathematical calculation like if you want to have a fr filter or laplace transform if you want to implement a laplace transform or fourier transform which has a complex mathematical equations in that case you can prefer dsp processor okay microprocessor will not have the capable microcontrollers will not have the capability to do to the complex uh, mathematical calculation but there are certain microcontrollers like now nowadays the microcontrollers the latest microcontrollers from arm cortex m4 series they have this dsp capability okay you have to check you have to check whether the dsp whether the microcontroller has the dsp capability or not okay so i just repeat dsp processor are meant for doing complex mathematical calculation okay so whenever you want to deal with the floating points okay floating points then you can choose a dsp processor and if you want to implement a hard real time constraint you can choose a dsp processor and if you want to implement a continuous data stream okay when you have a continuous data stream like uh, like uh, interfacing your audio my um, interfacing a mic or interfacing a camera in that case you can go for dsps okay so why do you need this dsp processor like uh, so microcontrollers when you check the difference between microcontrollers and dsp processor microcontrollers are control oriented if you want to implement a control application you can choose a microcontroller if you want to implement an algorithm if you want to implement a data path oriented like if you want to implement any algorithm complex algorithm which has a complex mathematical calculation then you can choose a dsp processor okay when you compare a dsp processor with a general purpose processor like pentium 4 general purpose processor will have large memory okay and they have advanced operating systems and they can do uh, parallel processing but it is not real time okay it will not have a it is not a real time systems there is no specific deadline when you open a microsoft excel it sometimes it may open soon sometimes it may delay okay so because of its parallel processing like uh, it, it shared because it is using the shared resource like there is no real time processing on general purpose processor okay so when you use a dsp processor it you will have precision it have more accuracy and cost saving because smaller in size and it is battery operated it can operate on low voltage okay and processing of signals in real time so that's the advantage of going using going with dsp processor with a gpp processor okay if you're clear with the difference between a dsp processor and gpp processor just type clear in the chat box if you want me to repeat just type rpt in the chat box okay i'll go through your chat now and if i'll go with the majority okay okay 
So I see uh, I see few people like Subodh Raj is asking for repeat. Okay, I see some lot of clear here. Just give me a moment. Yes, notes will be provided. Okay, notes will be provided. The PPT slides will be provided on the will be provided on Discord. Okay, we'll share you the PPT. If DSP stands for Digital Signal Processing. Okay, floating point DSP floating point is infinite floating floating point is not. In fun, no, only finite floating point. Okay, this is for Anand Govakar. So I'll, I'll just repeat because there are few people asking for repeat. Okay, yes, uh, there is a few people asking for repeat. Just give me a moment. Let me repeat this one. Okay, see uh, when to use DSP processor. When to when to use a DSP processor? Like see when if you want to implement a control applications like a simple door lock applications or uh, or like uh, uh, any any simple applications which has only control oriented okay uh, or like iot te temperature monitoring kind of applications okay that microcontroller is alone is enough okay but if you want to implement an algorithm okay like background removal or like uh, uh, like digital camera applications in that case you need a dsp processor okay dsp processor or data both data path oriented so whenever you want to implement an algorithm you can go with the dsp it supports there are two types fixed point and floating point floating point will have accuracy okay so uh, will have accuracy like G, like if, when you compare the dsp processor with the general purpose processor general purpose processor will have large memory and it has advanced operating systems but it, it is not real time real time means there is no specific deadline to complete a task if you open a microsoft excel it may take it may open sometimes it may it may open in one minute sometimes it may open it uh, like 30 seconds or sometimes it may take two minutes okay based upon the parallel process based upon the shared resource which was used by the cpu okay whereas in dsp processor you'll have the precision you'll have accuracy and since it's floating point you'll have more accuracy cost saving and it is smaller in size okay and you have it's low power consumption because it operates on 3.3 3.3 volt okay and uh, it, it can process signals in real time okay. it has special interface that so that it can process signals on real time okay so these are these are the advantage of a dsp processor okay so basically in in processors there are two types of architecture when you go for the data sheet you have to check what architecture it has most of the dsp processor or hardware architecture but sometimes the microcontrollers some microcontrollers will be based on the one human architecture I'll tell you the difference between these two architectures because most of the interview questions they ask what is the difference between a Harvard architecture and the one human architecture. Okay, in Harvard architecture, the CPU is connected to the program memory and data memory by a different bus so that it can access program memory and data memory simultaneously. Okay, it can fetch the program data, program memory, and it can also fetch from data memory. Whereas in one human architecture, it uses the same bus to connect the program memory and data memory. Okay, so it can either fetch program or it either fetch data. Since it's using the same bus, it has the bus with the same size. Whereas in Harvard architecture, since it uses a different bus for program memory and data memory, it can have a different bus width. Okay, it can have a different bus address, uh, bus width, separate bus width for the program memory, separate bus width for the data memory. Okay, so most of the DSP processor or Harvard architecture, but you have to check with the data sheet of the DSP uh, microcontrollers or DSP uh, micro with the to check whether it is a Harvard or one human architecture. Okay. So to download the data sheets, you can visit a website called digiki.com. Okay, if you if you want me to show what uh, if you want me to show digiki.com, uh, let me show the digiki.com. Okay, uh, so you can go for you can search for um, you just visit uh, open a link called digiki.com. Okay, where you can search for any microcontrollers. Okay, so you can search for microcontrollers microcontrollers okay if you have any any particular number 8051 you can put 8051 so you can see there are more than 1 lakh 1 lakh microcontrollers are available okay uh, items are available so uh, this website can provide you a lot of information like you can download the data sheets you can download the uh, schematic libraries if you want to design a schematics on the cadence or uh, uh, cadence or altium or any pcb design software like you can download the symbols schematic symbols as well as the pcb footprint symbols from digikey okay even if you if you, you can check out the price you can check out uh, you can even if you want to purchase you can also purchase okay but the company is from U us you have to import okay so see you can see that there are total for microcontrollers alone like you can see that there are total of one lakh for these, these are the type of manufacturer like different manufacturers microcontroller manufacturer these are the series packaging 
okay product status and these are the core okay 851 core this is 851 core and you have like all type of core arm core and everything okay core size speed like based on the speed they have the category based on the core size 8 bit or 16 bit okay and speed connectivity okay and you have program memory size so i want you to go through this website called digigi.com digigi.com and just search for microcontrollers so you can download if you if you want to download the data sheet like you can just click this link and you can download the data sheet okay so data sheet will have all details like the product core processor speed peripherals okay uh, program memory size and uh, mounting type and documents and media you can see the models here okay you can download the eda models from uh, from ultra librarian or from or from snap eda okay this is this is to if you want the schematic symbol okay if you want the schematic symbol for if, if you want to design, design a product and if you want a schematic symbol for this uh, microcontroller so you can download this from snap eda this is the uh, this is the footprint symbol okay you have this and if you want to see the 3d model there is no 3d model available for this device okay and it is free it is free you can download and you can use it okay okay so the next is cpls and dp cpls and fpgas okay complex programmable logical devices and field programmable gate arrays cpld stands for control oriented and fpga stands for data path oriented so wherever you use a dsp processor you can use an fpga i'll tell you what is the difference between dsps and fpga but wherever you use a microcontroller you can use a cpld okay complex programmable logical devices so uh, the difference between microcontroller and cpld is microcontroller you cannot customize whereas cpld you can customize on your own okay say for example if you take a 851 uh, like the uart pin is there okay if you want three or four uarts in the same ic same 851 ic then it is not possible you can use a software you want okay but it is limited but in cpld if you want 10 uarts you can configure the 10 io pins as a uart and you can use it that's the advantage of cpld you can even port the 851 core inside the cpld okay so that is possible so wherever you want to implement a microcontroller application and if you want to customize the application then customize the uh, peripherals inside the microcontroller then you can use the cpld okay wherever you use a dsp processor and if you want to customize the dsp processor then you can choose the field programmer gate arrays fpgas fpgas or data path oriented okay if this is clear just type clear in the chat box if you if you want me to repeat just type rpt on the chat box okay is that clear is that clear i'm ready for chat it will take some uh, 20 seconds of delay to reach me okay FPG stands for field programming get arrays. Okay. Okay. So so a lot of people are asking for C. Okay, I'll just repeat. I'll just repeat. Okay. So CPLD stands for complex programmable logical devices. Complex programmable logical devices. Okay. So it is evolved from PLAs and PAL. Okay. Programmable logical arrays and programmable array logic. So then comes the PLDs, programmable logical devices. Okay, then the advanced version of the PLDs is the CPLDs, complex programmable logical devices. It's control oriented. It means, it means wherever you use a microcontroller, you can in, instead of using a microcontroller, you can use CPLD. Okay, if you want to replace a DSP processor, you can replace with a FPGA. The difference between FPGA and DSP is FPGA can be customized. I'll share you on the next slide. Okay, I'll show you. I, I'll have a slide for dedicatedly for that how it works okay so this is the cpld architecture like you have the logic blocks okay where you can implement the microcontroller core uh, any ALU core you can implement and you have io blocks which you can customize and you have the clock routing where you can inter give clock supply for this clocks uh, for the logic blocks and you have the routing matrix to connect this logic blocks to interconnect this logic blocks okay whereas in fpg architecture you have the logic blocks io blocks clock routing routing matrix but you have additionally memory and you have multiplayer and DSP blocks. Okay, even memory is available on the CPLDs. Apart from this, you have multiplayer which is not available on the CPLDs. Okay, when you see, when you check the difference between CPLDs and FPGAs, multiplayer is not there in CPLDs. Okay, so you can by using multiplayer and DSP blocks, you can do a DSP applications. Then you have a processor core. Okay, processor core means the competition like the 30 the ALU unit. Okay, 
So it, there are two types of core on APG. One is the soft core processor, the other is a hard core processor. Okay, I'll tell you the difference between a soft core processor and a hard core processor. Soft core processor, the core is created by your software. Okay, you create the core by yourself. Okay, if you want microblaze, you can create microblaze. If you want an ARM core, you can create an ARM core. The core is created by you by using the software, by using the hardware description language. That is called soft core processor. The hard core processor means the core is populated in, inside the FPG in the fab itself, in, from Xilinx itself. Okay, power PC is an example for hard core processor. Okay, what a soft core processor, the core is created by the user. Okay, so I just repeat a CPLD architecture, like CPLD architecture, I'll show you the what is CP, CP, you have logic blocks, IO blocks, clock, clock routing and routing matrix. There is no DSP, uh, DSP blocks and there is no processor core on CPLD architecture. Okay, if you want to build any microcontroller core inside, you can you can create on CPLD architecture. Okay, whereas in FPGA, you have additionally you have multiplayers and DSP blocks, and you have the processor core. Okay, the multiplayers and DSP blocks like which which can be used which can do a DSP processing inside. Okay, and processor core, two types of processor core. One is soft core, the other is the hard core. Soft core, the core is created by the user. If you don't know what is core, the core is a ALU unit. Okay, it's a 32-bit L unit which has like the program counter registers and everything. That is the core. Okay, if you take an 8-bit core like 82 core, which, which will which have the program counter, program status word. Okay, and you will have the L units. Okay, so that is adders. Okay, that is the processor core. So you can have your own process. Like you can have uh, the, the if you, if you create the core through the code, then it is called soft core processor. Hard core means the core is populated in the fab itself from Xilinx. Okay, so uh, that is an example for uh, PowerPC is an example for hardcore. So FPJ technology wise, like they have you have SRAM technology which is reprogrammable but volatile. Volatile means the program will erased. Okay, flash is non-volatile. It's reprogrammable, non-volatile. The program will remain even when you power off and power on the uh, power on the FPGA. Okay, so there are now flash FPGA is available. Antifuse FPG is also available. It's one-time programmable. Okay, once it's programmed, then you can't erase. Non-volatile. Okay, it's non-volatile and, and the program will remain forever. Okay, that is antifuse technology. So these are the three types of FPG technologies. So you can based on the application, you can choose so most of the toys. Like if you want to go toys, then antifuse is a technology like where they will program it for once and they will never reprogram. Okay, you can't reprogram. So most of the toys, electronic toys, they use antifuse technology. Okay, most of like flash is where like uh, the, you can have an option to reprogram, but it's not worth it. Most of your embedded system application is based on the flash technology. Okay, SRAM is cheaper. Like whenever like you need an if if you choose an SRAM FPGA, then you need an additional prom prom. Okay, programmable read only memory to boot from the to have the boot code from like to have the application code on the prom, and you can boot it from prom. Okay, is that clear? If it is clear, just type clear in the chat box. If you want me to repeat, okay. Just type RPT in the chat box. I'll try to go slow. Okay. I'll try to go slow. I'll go through the chat. Uh, Hemant, Hemant Bargo, like uh, no worries. Okay. You just submit the attendance form. Even if you don't get a confirmation email, there is a subscription. There's a link in the uh, description box. You can register for it now and you can submit the attendance form. Okay. So thank you. So the next is when to use digital signal processing in FPGA. Okay, whenever you need a higher performance, like whenever you have, whenever you want to implement a parallel algorithm, because the language itself, the hardware description language, the Verilog and BHL itself supports it's a parallel processing. Okay, so whenever you want to implement a higher performance, you can go with uh, you can go with the uh, FPGA. Okay, when you want to implement a, when you have a parallel algorithm, you can go with the uh, FPGA. And when you want to customize the design, okay, when you optimize for speed and cost, you can go with an FPGA. And system integration, like if you want to reduce the number of components, okay, number of components in the embedded system design, then you can go with an FPGA. I'll show you one example, like how you can reduce the number of components if when you use an FPGA. Okay, so uh, this is a board. Okay, this is an this is a DSP board. Uh, it's uh, this board is based on like TMS. It uses a Texas Instruments TMS three to zero C six seven one series. It's a floating it's a floating point DSP. Okay, if you check the block diagram of this board. You have power supply. You have the audio codec to process to inter to interface the mic. Okay, to and you have the um, Ethernet MAC 
and you have SRAMs and you have SDRAMs and you have a lot of address decode unit and memory controller unit and co-processing unit like you have timers, you have interrupt controllers, you have UART. Okay, so all these are all these are different integrated circuits. But when you use an FPGA, okay, uh, like you can take this block diagram and power supply part cannot be uh, power supply part will dissipate more heat. Okay, so that functionality cannot be uh, uh, you cannot implement that logic inside an FPGA. Okay, like most of the power supply like 705 regulators or any regulators that you cannot implement that stuff on this FPGA. Audio codec, you cannot have audio codec because audio codec will have analog signal processing. Okay, you have an analog ground. So it's not better to, so it is not advised to bring this audio codec inside this digital part. Okay, FPGA is pure digital. Okay, so audio codec you cannot implement. SRAMs and SDRAMs like it needs like more silicon area. Okay, when you when you implement SRAMs and SDRAMs on this FPG, it is more silicon area. The rest of this, the rest of this uh, part, you can make it as a single FPG, and you can implement the uh, the rest of the rest of the parts you can connect externally. Okay, by doing this, you can reduce the number of chips. Okay, when you implement an FPGA, everything is inside this FPGA. Okay, like the timers, interrupt controller, UART, and uh, like display controllers, address decoder, Ethernet MAC, everything is inside this FPGA. No need to have a separate chip on the PCB. Okay, so that's the advantage of going with FPGA. You can configure it on by using the software. So that is that is why it is called reconfigurable. Okay, so configurable system on chip. Okay, everything since it's available, everything is available on chip. It's called configurable system on chip. Okay, is that clear? So that's the advantage of uh, FPGA. If if this slide is clear for you, okay, just type clear in the chat box. Uh, if you want me to repeat, just type repeat in the chat box. Okay, Rohini, I will go slow. Rohini, I will go slow. Okay. Okay. So thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. Like I see a lot of clear. I I see a lot of clear here. Uh, let me. Uh, go through okay because it takes uh, it takes 30 seconds your chat takes 30 seconds to reach me okay there's a delay uh the next is multi-core processor okay okay in order to avoid competition uh, like uh, com competition with the fpga like the dsp manufacturing companies they come up with the concept called multi-core processor okay having more than one core on a single package it's called multi-core processor multi-core processor or system on chip okay system on chip like there are two types of multi-core processor. One is symmetric multiprocessing. The other is asymmetric multiprocessing. Okay, symmetric multiprocessing means if the core is identical, then it is symmetric multiprocessing. I'll give you one example for that. ESP32. You have a dual core. It's a symmetric multiprocessing. Okay, the core is identical. Okay, when you have an identical core, you can have a same operating system on both the cores. Okay, asymmetric asymmetric multiprocessing. You have the core is different. Okay, you have the core like you have the ARM core as well as the DSP core. One example is TA OMAP. I'll show you on the next slide. I'll show you on this next slide. Okay. So since the core is different, you can have a different different operating system inside this each each of this core. Okay. And even if even it will work even without a shared memory. Okay. That's so. So this is one example of system on chip where you will have more number of processes. Like you have ISP stands for image signal processing unit, NPU stands for neural processing unit, CPU GPU stands for graphic processing unit, and DSP for digital signal processing unit, and CPU for like central processing unit. You have multimedia connectivity like 4G, BT, Bluetooth, 5G, and Wi-Fi, video encoder. So Snapdragon, okay, Snapdragon like Broadcom chips, which is used on your mobile phones or or based on SOCs. Okay, the the processor which is used on your mobile phones like uh, Snapdragon or uh, Snapdragon from Qualcomm. Uh, they have like four quad, like eight quad. Like you can check your mobile specifications. Like they have four quad and eight quad. So one application, uh, one example for uh, the asymmetric multiprocessing is uh, T8 Texas Instruments. WOMAP processor like open multimedia application platform okay which has two uh, which has two different cores one is the ARM core which takes care of the microcontroller part the other is the DSP core which takes care of the DSP part most of the mobile phones which was manufactured in 2011 to 2015 was TA WOMAP okay the Nokia mobile phones was based on is based on TA WOMAP okay so which has like the GPS interface uh, like wireless LAN interface and uh, Bluetooth interface, uh, like uh, telecommunication modem chipset, and you have audio codec, USB OTG, everything is on single chip. Okay, you have 
uh, you have this MMC card interface, you have GPIO, a camera module interface, and NAND flash and NOT flash. Okay, everything is on single chip, so no need to have an interface anything externally. Okay, so this is called system on chip. Okay, system on chip. There are like process like ESP32, like this is very cheaper. You can get ESP32 for 300 to 400 rupees, which has a dual core processor. Okay. Uh, which has a dual core and uh, like you, the mobile phones now nowadays the mobile phones like it comes like four quad eight quad processor okay which has eight core processor because you can you can have gaming applications on it okay and you can use it for multi for multi-processing applications okay so this is okay this is for tmo map this is for soc so how fpj is different from asic ASIC stands for application specific integrated circuits. Okay, I'll tell you what is ASIC. ASIC means if you have a if you have a, if you have the code like VHDL code for any application, and if you want to manufacture a specific IC for that application, that is called an ASIC application specific integrated circuits. That will do only that that IC will do only that specific application. Okay, as like embedded system, the entire system will do a specific application. Like the IC will do only that application okay it's meant is specifically meant for that application in pantac like we use one asic one asic one of the product contains asic uh the product name is brainsense which the asic is purchased from a company called neurosky okay uh, we use the asic called thingier asic module which has a, a proprietary algorithm to measure the meditation level to measure the attention level from the brain okay uh, from the brain using the eg electrode so that is an asic and Movidia stick is one example for ASIC, ASIC, it's an ASIC, okay, which can do a neural processing unit, okay, so uh, FPGA is reprogrammable, ASIC cannot be reprogrammed, okay, ASIC, you cannot reprogram, most of the times ASIC cannot be reprogrammed, like it does the specific job, okay, whereas in FPGA, it's field programmable, like, uh, like you can reprogram, okay, it can be customized, so that's the difference between FPGA and ASIC. Okay, if it is clear, if this is clear, the difference between ASIC and FPJ is clear for you. Just type clear in the chat box. Okay, if you want me to repeat, just type RPT on the chat box. I'll go through your chat. Okay, I'll go with the majority. I'll try to go slow. I'll try to go slow. I, I see a lot of comments. Okay, I'll repeat. Okay. Karthik is asking for repeat. Uh, how much time? Okay, so today's session, today's session, like the session will be extended for 30 more minutes. Okay, really sorry for that. From tomorrow's session, we'll, we'll stick to the time. We'll stick to the time because we have a lot of introduction before. Uh, so it takes a few more, a few more uh, slides to complete. Okay, so please wait. Okay, uh, please be patient. Okay, definitely like it will, it will, like, it will be extended for another 30 more minutes because we, we take 10 to 15 minutes of time for introduction about the what we are going to cover up on this 30 days okay okay so some of them ask repeat for uh, repeat for this fpga what is the difference between fpga and asic asic application specific integrated circuits if you if you design an ic for specific application then it's called asic okay you can provide the hardware description language code the digital code to the fabrication companies where the fabrication companies will make an IC for you. Okay, so one up, one example for that is Intel Movidia Stick is one example. Okay, and Thingier ASIC model we are using. Pantac is using a module called Thingier ASIC model. You can search for Google. That ASIC module is from a company called Neurosky. Okay, which has its own proprietary algorithm. By making by the, the reason why they go for ASIC is if if you want to if you want to make a chip with the proprietary algorithm, then it is better to go with an ASIC instead of a microcontroller because a microcontroller can be easily tampered. Okay, they can easily tamper the algorithm. DSP, even DSP processor that can be easily tampered. You can tamper the al algorithm. But when you use an ASIC, it is very hard to tamper the applications. Okay, so so that's the reason they go for the ASIC. Okay, FPG can be programmed. It can you can reprogram, but ASIC you cannot reprogram. Okay, so comparison like if you are using a simple door application, then go with the microcontrollers. Okay. Like simple applications, you can go with the disk microcontrollers. If you are using like if you if you are application as a image image processing or or audio processing application or or or, or any signal processing applications, then go with the DSP. Okay, system on chip. Like you can also implement the camera applications, camera kind of thing on SOC system on chip. Okay, uh, so the price will be slightly higher and the ASIC application specific integrated circuits will work. Only when you have more quantities, okay. Like when you when you can manufacture in quantities, minimum they they require minimum like uh, 
thirty thousand or one lakh pieces to manufacture. Okay, it's not you cannot you cannot do you cannot do ASIC for one or two pieces. You need minimum like uh, like a million pieces to manufacture. Okay, and FPGA are like is the FPGA is a high end application because there are FPGA chips which can cost you like twenty lakh rupees. A single chip can cost you twenty lakh rupees. You can check that on Digiki dot com. Okay, you can check the price on Digiki dot com, which is used for the satellite applications. Okay, the rocket I/O applications and uh, like aircraft. so all on uh, most of them most of them are um, are hard real time systems okay fpga field programmer gate arrays okay so these are the comparisons like uh, performance cost okay so whenever you choose a microcontroller whenever you choose a microcontroller or microprocessor or cpu in fpga it comes with a package okay if you take a 8051 you, you will get this uh, dip package like on other packages like you have quad flat package on you have small outline integrated circuits sycc package you have plcc package plastic lead chip carrier package you have bgs ball grid arrays okay so you have to choose a package when you choose a package each package needs a different equipment to mount to solder okay if you are choosing in the dip package uh, you can use a simple soldering iron okay soldering iron to mount the ic if you use a quad flat package then you need a temperature control soldering station Special most of the DSP processor would be on quad flat package. The ARM Cortex M4 series microcontrollers, thirty uh, bit microcontrollers will be on quad flat package. Specifically, specifically when you when the number of I/O is increased, okay, when you have more number of I/Os, then you will have this quad flat package. So if the I/O pin is less, like forty pin IC, then you you will find that uh, uh, you will find it on dip package, dual in line package. Okay, it's a through hole device, through hole like where you have to insert on the PCB. This is sur surface mount device, okay? Where you you will be mounting on top of the PCB, okay? Surface mount device. BGA will have ball grid array, which needs a O one. O one will cost you to minimum ten lakhs to uh, like one crore. Like if you want to mount this BGA, then you need a stencil for it, and you need a O one to mount to you. You need a O one to mount, okay? So so O one cost will go for ten lakhs to one crore, okay? So this these are the selection of package. If this is clear, if selection of packages is clear, uh, just type. Once you choose a processor, once you choose a processor, whether to choose a microprocessor or microcontroller or DSPs, then you have to choose a package. Okay, choose the package. After, okay, if this is clear, just type clear in the chat box. Okay. Okay. So thank you. So the next is. so the process selection criteria so the process selection criteria is based on like based on the you have to choose the processor like based on the development tools okay like uh, what type of ide you are going to use integrated development environment you are going to use and what are the number of ios you required for your for your uh, product and what is the performance in terms of speed okay whether it operates on 100 megahertz or uh, 30 megahertz or what is the speed you want okay performance and what is the cost what is the budget how much like what is the product cost okay how much the making cost should be uh, cost and what what is the whether you need a simple super loop or whether you need an operating system okay that you have to choose one what type of hardware tools you need okay whether you need a soldering iron or whether you need a soldering o1 okay uh, that uh, o1 or what type of hardware tools you want and what are the peripherals you want okay like uh, whether you need a uart or whether you need can control unit networks or uh, rtc or timers how much on board peripherals you want okay you have to ensure sometimes can is not available on the microcontroller you have to interface an external can peripheral okay sometimes can is available control unit network peripheral is available on the chip itself you can you have to choose the right chip okay you have to you can use digiki.com okay and power consumption uh, power consumption is where like you have uh, how much what is the power like 3 whether it can work on 3.3 volt or 1.2 volt or 1.8 volt or it can be battery operated for a longer period of time okay and supply reputation so you have to ensure that minimum the processor will be available in the market for at least for 5 years or 10 years so that you can make sale on your product okay because uh, to make a break even okay it needs more number of time okay if the if if the ic is not available on sale then you have to change the design okay whenever this will happens when you when you manufacture a product when you design your own product and you take this product to the market and if and if the ic is not available then you have to redesign okay so the, the nre cost will go high the non, non recurring engineering cost will go high okay so that supply reputation you have to check with the supply reputation so these are the process selection criteria i just repeat choose the right development tools choose how many ios you need for your project for your ember system design 
choose the performance what is the speed you want what is the cost what is the microcontroller cost you want or dsp processor and choose whether whether you need a simple super loop or a operating system you need an rtos a free autos or any rtos you need and hardware tools what is the hardware tools you want okay uh, like soldering or soldering station or what is that you want and power consumption whether it can operate on 3.3 volt 5 volt power supply or 3.3 volt or 1.2 volt okay that you check and supply reputation so whether the chip will be available in the market for at least for five years or 10 years so that you can make a sale okay for a longer period of time otherwise you have to redesign the product and you have to again take it to the market which will add which will cost you more okay if this is clear and just type clear in the chat box Okay, if it is, if you found this session useful, just type useful in the chat box. If you found this session useful or love this, just type love this in the chat box. Just type the heart emoji on the chat box. Okay, I'll go slow. RJ World, I, I'll go slow. Okay, I'll go slow. I'll go slow. Okay, if, if you found this useful, just type useful in the chat box. Okay, just type useful in the chat box. I want to see, okay, and also just type the heart emoji. Okay, if, if you love this content, just a hot emoji okay you will have this recordings you can watch it later okay if if it i will try to go slow if uh like uh try to go slow you this recordings will be available for three days okay so you can go through this and you can take notes the purpose is to help okay the purpose is to help thank you so much thank you so much for all the fire emojis and for all the heart emojis okay thank you Okay, so the next is hardware design flow. Okay, hardware design flow. Like when you want to design a hardware, what are the steps involved in bringing up your product? Okay, the very first thing is you have to collect the requirements from the customer. Okay, I just repeat, you have to collect the requirements from the customer, in the specifications. Then you have to bring that specifications or requirements to a schematic, to a schematics. Okay, there are a lot of schematics tools available in the market. Like you have. Cadence, you have Altium, you have uh, like ECAD and like there are a lot of tools available there. Okay, free tools or Proteus, free tools also available there. So you have to bring schematics. The very first thing is the schematics and you have to build a schematic symbol. If it is not available, if the symbol is not available on the on the software, you have to build your own schematic symbol or you can download it from digikey.com. Okay, draw the schematics. The next is draw the PCB layout using a PCB design layout software. Then you just send it for fabrication. After that, you get the PCB, then you assemble it and you, uh, you, you assemble the board. Okay, this is the hardware design flow. This is how you bring out the board. I just repeat, the first thing is schematic design. Okay, once you design the schematics, then you have to design the layouts, PCB layouts, where you have to create the PCB footprints and you have to design, you have to link the schematic symbol to the PCB footprint, uh, PCB symbols. Okay, PCB footprint, footprint, then you have to design and you have to route it. Finally, you have to make a, make the gerber. You have to send the gerber to the uh, PCB manufacturing companies and they will manufacture a PCB for you. Then after that, you can assemble the board and you can test it. This is the hardware design flow. Okay. The software design flow is where you have to choose the IDE, Integrated Development Environment, which will have the compiler, assembler and linker together. Okay. So we are going to use the STM32 cube IDE in tomorrow's session. Like I'll be sharing the link on the uh, Discord. Okay. So you can download. I, I have also shared a video how to install that, how to install that STM32 cube IDE. Okay. So where you will be writing the code on C language or C++, okay, or ASM language. And this compiler will compile this code and which will transfer to a hex code. Only this hex code will be downloaded to the microcontroller, okay. So for that, you need a software called a emulator or you need a flash programming tool. There are two options. Either you use, a, you use an emulator to download the program or you use a flash programming tool to download the program. There are two ways to do that, okay. So this is what happens in the software design flow. Okay, if you are clear with the hardware design flow and software design flow, just type clear in the chat box. If you want me to repeat the both things, the hardware design flow and the software design flow, just type RPT in the chat box. We are running out of time. Okay, so I'll try to go slow. I see a lot of people are asking for go slow. I'm really sorry for that because like we are running out of time because a lot of people, they don't have patience. Okay. Okay, I see a lot of clear. I see a lot of clear. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. I really thank you so much uh, for your time and patience. Okay, I appreciate your patience. So, uh, so there are only few slides, few more slides. We can complete simulation, evaluation, and emulation. Simulation is a process where there is no hardware. Okay, you can everything is on software. You can just connect and you can simulate. 
there are a lot of simulation software available for electronics and evolution is where you have you can purchase this board from the market uh, from the market or from the from the manufacturer itself you implement your own application and you test this application once it's working then you go for your own board designing your own board that process is called emulation and this is the process which is used on industries okay if you like simulation evolution emulation okay so uh, so ML, emulation is where you need a emulator okay emulator is a hardware which connects the target software as well as the target design board which you design the specific product which you design okay and you can st go step by step execution and you can download the program step by step execution and you can see the output so that is what emulation is okay simulation evaluation emulation so once the product is done the cabinet design you can use a 3d printer or you can go for a laser cutting machines cnc machines or a mold okay and finally you need a tzik tzik is a product which is used for testing say for example if you want to test 100 products in one day okay then it is not possible to do a manual testing Instead of that, you write, you, you develop a test zig. Okay, test zig is a hardware which uses a pogo pins. Okay, so this is called pogo pins. Like this pin is, is called pogo pins. Okay, uh, like where uh, you need to, uh, where you will be placing the board and you'll be running the test sequence. Okay, and uh, you can uh, you can test whether what are the peripherals is working or not. By using test zig, you can even test 100 boards or 1000 boards in one day. Okay. If, if you see, if you go and look into mobile phone manufacturing companies, they will be using Zig for testing the mobile phones, their product. So any product, if you want to market, like when you want to manufacture in more quantities, then you need the Zig. The Zig has to be uh, done by the embedded developer. Okay. Has to be, has to be designed by the guy who is designing the product. Okay. So we have come to an end. So this is the recap of designing an embedded system design. The very first thing is you have to choose the idea. Okay. If you want to design a product, first choose the idea whether it is saleable product okay then decide what is the application what is the features okay what is the cost of the product after choosing deciding the cost and everything then go for the choosing the right processor whether whether you want to choose a microcontroller or a dsp processor or a system on chip okay you decide that decide the package okay decide the language whether you are going to write in c language or asm language or graphical language or mixes mixer with c and asm Okay, or design and fabricate the PCB, then finally go for component assembly, integration and testing. Okay, once the testing is done, then go for the ZIG. Okay, test ZIG and give it to the manufacturer. Okay, to the assembly house, they will manufacture the product. Okay, so these are the, these are the steps in recap of designing the embedded system design. Thank you so much for your time. So today's session is over. Like uh, we have, so far we have caught up uh, the, we have caught up first, uh, the first slide we have caught up what is the embedded system design. The second slide we have caught up the types of embedded system design, a uh, hard real time and soft real time. And third slide we have caught up how to choose the right processor, like microprocessors, microcontrollers, DSPs and FPGAs and CPLDs. Okay, and uh, and we have caught up like the difference between microprocessor and microcontroller, DSPs and FPGAs, uh, CPLDs and FPGAs, and uh, FPGA and ASIC. Okay, and uh, FPGA and DSPs we have caught up. Why you have to choose uh, uh, when you have to choose DSP with the FPGA we have caught up. And uh, SOC, system on chip, symmetric multiprocessing, asymmetric multiprocessing, we have covered up. And we have covered up like uh, how to, or like uh, the process selection criteria we covered. Then hardware design flow, software design flow, and steps for uh, like recap of designing and embedded system design. Okay. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, if, if, you, if, you love, if you like this session, like if you love this session, just type this heart emoji, emoji on the chat box. Okay. So tomorrow's session is a practical session. I, before that, I want you to do the activity, okay? To install the Cube IDE. I'll tell you how to do this IDE. So before that, uh, I will tell you what is the difference between a single month internship, which is a free internship program, as well as the three month internship program, okay? The single internship program is for one, inter like one internship, which is for 30 days, whereas the three month internship program is for three months, okay? Three months, the course which is covered is for 30 days, which is for free, and the platform is on YouTube or LinkedIn. Okay. You can come to YouTube and you can learn it. Okay. The videos will be, you have to learn it within three to five days. All the videos will be part three to five days. After that, we will remove the video. Okay. So here you'll be learning like four different courses. One is the embedded C. The other is the embedded system design and IOT course. The other is the specifically the IOT course, which is for 30 days. The fourth course is not PCB design. The fourth course is ARM Cortex M4. I have changed the course for ARM Cortex M4 series. Okay, the course recordings is lifetime. You can view the recordings. If you sign up for a three month internship program, the recording is lifetime. Okay, attendance 
form like you have you need to attend minimum 28 days to get a free certificate because we don't want to give certificate for 10 days attendance or 5 day 5 days attendance or 15 even 15 days attendance okay so minimum 28 days attendance you may get a wave of two days okay is required for and you have to do the activity and submit on the discord okay so because this this certificate is not a participation certificate certificate because previous live we have uh, we you, we have given a participation participation certificate so even if they attend like 25 days we have given a certificate but this time uh, we change that to internship certificate because we want uh, we want to help you okay so no need to pay for this 30 days internship certificate it's free okay so material like based on task completion it will be it will be there on discord private committee no private committee for the free version Whereas here you have a private committee and live sessions like on Zoom platform, you have unlimited live sessions for a lifetime. Okay. Because every Saturdays we have a class, we have a live class on A as well as on embedded. Okay. Which is for 45 minutes to one hour, which, which you can attend. And there are a lot of live classes for entrepreneurs corner, passive income hackathon is there, which you can attend. Okay. And validity it's the video is validity is for three days. Whereas that video is for lifetime. And certificate, you get one certificate, whereas this is a three month certification, you will, which a single certificate with a three months validity, three months, okay, that you'll get the pricing is 1000 triple nine. Okay, that's a pricing. So if you want to sign up, you can sign up, you will get a personal login and password, like you'll have the community like where you can go and uh, where you can uh, sign up for this, go for learn.pantaxsolution.net. Okay, and you can log in. Uh, and you can log in using the password and you can view the videos at any point of time, whenever you are comfortable. Okay. And if you have any questions, we have live on the community on every week. You can come to the live and you can show up on Zoom platform and you can ask your questions. Okay. You can meet me on live on Zoom platform on every week on or myself or Sanjay will handle the uh, class on for AI as well as for Ember System Design. Okay. And you can learn on the go on your mobile phone. So. I'll just give you a detail like what are the things which we covered up on each classes. The MRC master class series is for 30 days. We have five plus project. The board which is used on this course work is STM32 F411 board. Okay. And uh, which is of value of 1499. And number second, number two course is ESD and IOT master class. Again, which is a 30 day course which has five architecture cover like 851 PIC, uh, ARM and uh, ARM Cortex M4 and uh, ESP32, which is of 1499 value. Okay. And ARM Cortex M4 series, which is again 30 day challenge, which, which is focused only on STM32 core. Okay. We, we are getting into deep, deeper into what is linker, how to write a linker program, uh, how to write, uh, how to write peripherals like uh, spy, uh, spy, uh, how, how spy for the spy protocol, I2C protocol. We are, we are going much more detail on the ARM Cortex M4 series dedicated only on the ARM Cortex M4 series. Okay. Which is a 30 day series, which is a 30 day. So we choose specifically this 32 bit because uh, if you practice this one course alone, okay, one course alone, this will help you to get a job because, because a lot of people, a lot of my students has get to, has told that this one course alone has helped them to get a job. Okay. So thousand four double nine value and IOT masterclass, we have covered up the ThinkSpeak platform, like uh, ThinkSpeak as well as the, uh, Amazon, Amazon cloud. Okay. And, uh, Microsoft Azure platform and it has five plus projects. 30 day challenge. Okay. 1,400. So all this course, the value is five triple nine six. We are giving it for thousand triple nine. Okay. Thousand triple nine plus GST, thousand triple nine plus GST. And uh, al along with this, uh, you get the community access where you get a lifetime session for free. Weekly, weekly live sessions, weekly mastermind sessions for free. And you also attend the inner circle calls. Okay. So all this internship plus community you get for five, triple nine, which is for thousand triple nine plus GST. Okay. So the lifetime validity, so the, it's a limited time offer. So I'm going to, uh, like the reviews is the, res, the reviews for our course is we have at 4.7 Google reviews, which is like 12,800 students because this, this slide was preferred, was prepared before a month back. Okay. So 12,310, it's not 12,800 reviews. Okay. You can search it on Google, like Pantac solutions at Pantac.ai. You have 12,800 Google reviews, 4.7 Google ratings. Okay. And the launch course, like the four courses, we have like 20 days of learning, lifetime community access and entrepreneurs coaching on Worries Way Hub and three months internship certificate, hackathons and every week, okay, Zoom platform, lifetime access, no recordings or replays, okay, for the hackathon sessions and 500 plus embedded interview questions, okay. So all this value is for like, is the total value is 5996, which is 
the 30 the 30 minute validity okay the 30 minute uh, validity what i'm going to offer today is today office only for 30 minutes is triple nine plus gst okay triple nine plus gst it's not thousand uh triple nine it's triple nine plus gst and you get a three months internship certificate okay three months internship certificate along with the lifetime community uh, where you can access uh the courses for lifetime as well as you will have access to the uh, live sessions on every weekend okay so if you want to sign up the the razor pay link is all there on the chat box you can link it will be valid only for 30 minutes okay i'll run the timer so before i close the session like i'll run the timer so once the 30 minutes session is over like i will close this uh, offer so it won't be available for triple n even if it is if you found some links there you won't get this arm contact some four series okay arm contact some four course which is for that is you will have only the pcb design course you will not get this arm contact some four series uh, on the same price okay so so coming to the activity coming to the activity and assignments uh, on discord uh, so i'm going to give a gift for anyone who is doing the activity today you are going to get a brain computer interface course for free okay so where you can log in and you can use it so i'll sh I'll, sh I'll tell you how to how to uh, submit the activity okay you just go for discord uh, discord like you just go for discord.com the link is there on the the link is there on the chat box okay uh, like under this like you have this warriors way icon warriors way hub icon you click this warriors way hub icon you can see the activity here like the activity esd live esd live internship activity is there okay all you have to do is i have a top 100 embedded interview questions which is posted on my linkedin okay I'll, I'll i'll share you that just give me a moment let me check this okay uh on on my linkedin post i have top 100 embedded interview questions so you can download this book okay all you have to do is you have to give a like okay make a comment and you have to repost so that it will be helpful for the other students okay just take a snapshot and share it on discord you will get a brain computer interface course free you will have a google form there you have to fill up the google form okay don't only share the snapshot you also have to fill the google form once you share you have to also have to fill the google form like where uh, uh okay where you have to where you have to uh um where, where you have to fill this google form to get this brain computer interface for free okay so that because uh, that brain computer interface we are the only manufacturer who is manufacturing brain computer interface uh device in india okay which is uh which is a consumer grade device definitely it will be an added value for you okay you can use it just for student projects especially if you're going to do for student projects or if you want to add it for resume you can use it okay so i want to like comment and repost okay the second activity is uh, the second activity assignment, the second assignment is like, uh, you, I have shared, um, I have, if just give me a moment, let me share the assignment for ESD. Okay. Assignment for ESD. Just give me a moment. Let me check for the assignment for ESD. Okay. So assignment for ESD is here install like you have a video here okay you have a video to watch how to install stm32 cube ide you just install this ide and take a snapshot on your system and you post it because this is required for doing this process okay uh, only when you install today like you can develop the program tomorrow but unfortunately you need a hardware for this but i want you to practice even if you don't have hardware you just go until the build point okay until you build this you just go just complete the build successfully okay only for downloading the program you need the hardware okay so i strongly advise you to purchase this hardware like the stm32 f411 board definitely it is worth of investing that money okay it is worth of investing this money uh, so you can purchase and you please do this uh, in practice okay in practice so these are the two activities okay if you if Okay, if you if you love this activity, okay, if you love this activity, just type love this on the chat box. Just type the heart emoji on the chat box. Heart emoji on the chat box. Okay, I'll go through the chat. So you will get you will get you will get this BCA uh, you will get the BCA course free. Okay, when you do the activity and post it, you will get the BCA course free. Okay, the assignment is to how to install the SMT Q by D. Uh, the video is there on YouTube okay you go through the video the link is there where to download where to download the id the link is there okay download this id 
uninstall install on the pc okay if you found any problems okay if you, you post it on the discord or post it on the video below on the youtube okay i'll go through your comments i'll go through your comments and i'll give you a, i'll give i'll arrange a solution for that okay so thank you so much for your love i see a lot of a lot of hot emojis on the chat box okay thank you so much for your love okay so the next is I'll, the time for attendance okay so before how many of them how many of them want to learn my uh, want to learn from me like from the learnings from my own life uh, how many of them want to learn just type me in the chat box because i want to share my my learnings uh, my 19 years of entrepreneur's journey uh, i want to share my uh, learnings which can which could be a great takeaway for you today how many of them want to uh, learn from me just type me in the chat box okay thank you so much i see a lot of me on the chat box okay so i'll share the so uh, those who want to learn from me stay I, i'll be extending for only for five minutes i will never take more than five to ten minutes okay stay here on the live after the attendance okay after the attendance stay here the here on the live i'll share my journey of the 19 years entrepreneur's journey what are the hard things i went out okay and how what are the key takeaways from my learning so that you can use it and you can grow and you can grow faster okay that's my tips to you today okay this will be the great learning for you today i assure you that that will be, that will be the great learning today okay so time for attendance for two minutes i ask my team to share the attendance on the chat box okay uh, chat box attendance is there okay i'll so i'll just give uh, i'll just give uh 30 seconds for filling filing the attendance form okay i'll just give 30 seconds after that i'll i'll after that i'll continue my turning point okay I just give 30, 30, 30 seconds, 30 seconds for 30 seconds to 30 seconds to one minute for uh, for the attendance form. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. It's done once once it's done done in the done in the chat box. Okay. Once once you're done with this, once you're done in the uh, once you're done with the uh, done with the attendance, just type done in the chat box. I'll share you. Uh, I'll share you my uh, turning point. Okay. Okay. Definitely, this will be a great uh, learning for you today. Okay. I'll. Okay. I see a lot of done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll wait for 15 seconds. Okay. I'll wait for 15 seconds. So I'll never recommend Arduino because like uh, you will, you will not learn much more on Arduino. Like most of the files are inbuilt. Okay. So I want you to practice on this SCM32. So thank you so much. Let me share. Okay. Let me, uh, let me share my learnings. Okay, so my turning point in my life. Okay, my turning point in my life. Uh, just give me a moment. Okay, so like I started my uh, I started my company in the year two thousand four. I straightly came from college. Okay, uh, my father is a mechanic. Uh, his earning at that point of time is uh, six thousand rupees. Okay, his earning at that point of time is six thousand rupees. Uh, he didn't think that I'll be doing my engineering first. Okay. Uh, this was in year uh, 2000, uh, 1998. It was in year 1998. Okay, he didn't thought that I'll be getting into engineering, but I managed to get into uh, engineering and a government college. Okay, so uh, like uh, I like and he didn't thought that I'll be getting into masters. So I get into masters. Okay, uh, so. I, when I when I started my master degree like in College of Engineering, I did my masters in College of Engineering, Gindi, in Chennai. Uh, I do uh, apply electronics. So at that point of time, like I don't want to live a middle class life, okay? Because the college is uh, like I, 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 they have a lot of costly cars and costly students in the college. I don't have, I don't want to live a middle class life uh, in the college. Okay, my father dream was to I want to get into, uh, I want to get into a government job. Okay, his dream was to I want to get into a government job and I want to get a stable salary, stable income. So that's what's his dream. Okay, but when suddenly, uh, but my aim was to my intention at that point of time was to earn 50 lakh rupee per year. Okay, I want to earn 50 lakh rupee per year. That's my intention. I don't know how, but when I asked to when I ask how can I earn 50 lakh per year to my uh, to my friends, like they suggest me four options. 
either you become a politician okay or number 2 you go for a sports person or number 3 you should be on the media industry you should go for acting or number 4 is businessman you have to you should be a businessman okay the first three didn't work for me so i get into business okay i wanted to start a company okay but i don't know i don't know what company to start i don't know how to start it when i go to my father and i ask me like i need 2 lakh rupees for starting a business he didn't hesitate to give the money he told me one word like see if you're going to lose this money okay if you're going to lose this money i will take care of it i will take care of this loan because i'm going to borrow the money for you this 2 lakhs i'm going to borrow the money for you because i was spending 30% of the revenue of my home okay at that point i uh, for 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 ho- my hostel fees is at, at that point of time is 1500 rupees so i i'm taking 30% of the salary from my dad okay so uh, so he told me that like if you're, i'll give you i'll borrow and give that 2 lakh rupees to you but if 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 you're going to lose this money okay if you're going to lose this money no problem i will take care of this loan okay but you want to get into a government job okay you have to prepare for the government examinations and you have to get into a government job that's that's the word he given to me myself along with my friends okay i we started a company called pantax solutions it was in the year it was in the year 2004 i straightly came from uh, came from the college from the master masters i didn't have any work experience okay but we started a project center okay i don't have uh, like at that point in master of engineering they you have to complete a master project you have to do a ma- you have to do a project for master of engineering like they have two project at that point of phase 1 and phase 2 project even in bachelor degree like you have to complete a final year project i have not done my project on my own i purchase the project okay because i don't have capability to do the, do the project i purchase the project or like i purchase it uh, like for um, the master project i purchase it for 25000 rupees so i thought that that would be the best business to start okay but i don't know the programming i don't know how to write code uh, i don't know how to build products i don't know microcontroller stuff nothing okay but i straightly start the project center okay in the first year we completed 216 projects 15 project is failure 201 project is successful we made a revenue of around 18 lakhs 2.5 lakhs is the investment and 18 lakh is the revenue okay i'll tell you how we are achieving in the in the, in, the, in the, at, the, at 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 the end okay in 2005 we launched madurai branch and we made it as 40 lakh revenue in 2006 we launched a branch in hyderabad and kovai coimbatore like we made a 1.2 crore revenue at that point see the first time the first time uh, i fixed it for 50 lakh revenue per year okay 50 lakh revenue per year but we didn't achieve the goal at that point okay the second year like we give a try but we still we are not able to meet it on the third year we are able to sh- overshoot the goal to 1.2 crore revenue okay so 2006 we are we are able to i'll tell you how how i overshot it okay 2007 launch pune and cochin we made 2.2 crore revenue 2008 completely bootstrap okay 3.2 crore revenue uh, 2009 it's 3.8 2010 is what 4.2 crore 11 is 6.2 crore and 8 2013 is 8 crore revenue after 15 what happens is 2015 what the, there is no engineering grace okay before that lot of people join for engineering but after that they stop the the engineering market begins to dull lot of engineering colleges closed okay the revenue comes down like from 8 crore it becomes 5 crore the biggest hit comes at 2016 like when demonetization is introduced like we are able to at that point we have two companies the manufacturing company uh, like uh, is making zero revenue uh, on demonetization okay continuously for 6 months it was making zero revenue at that point Uh, we need 45 lakhs to run the company 45 lakhs to run both the companies okay so all the money what we earn we started giving back to the company okay 2016 is 4, 4 crore revenue and 17 like 3.5 crore 2018 is 3.2 crore and 2019 is 3.2 crore okay we started struggling to run this company and 2020 like when covid happens okay when covid happens the biggest lesson i learned is from covid okay if you agree like just type agree in the chat box covid is bigger than the problem on covid is bigger than demonetization or gst if you agree with the point just type agree on the chat box okay i want to go through a chat if you agree with the point the, the, the problem is the problem the covid problem is bigger than the uh, demonetization you agree with the point okay just type agree in the chat box if you agree with the point just type agree in the chat box 
yeah i see a lot of agree now okay i see a lot of agree now okay so i'll tell you what we are able to find out the problem okay the actual problem is not on demonetization the actual problem is not on is not on uh, is not on the uh, gst the actual problem is on our own mindset okay so even in covid we are able to generate revenue sitting from home okay we are able to sitting from home like 2021 it's 2.5 crore revenue 2022 it's 4.9 crore revenue with just three employees in the course market and 2023 like we are planning for 18 crore of revenue okay the point here to learn is okay the point here to learn is like see even if you don't know if you don't know programming like at, at 2002 at at 2000 at, at 2004 i don't know programming okay but i was a consistent learner daily basis i will learn the stuff daily basis i used to sleep only at 2 o'clock okay and i wake up at 7 o'clock back again 7 to 2 my working time is from morning 7 to 2 i used to learn stuff on a daily basis and implement the stuff okay so you should be a lifelong learner okay you should be a lifelong learner like and the main the you have your marvelous mind the marvelous mind can provide answer for you okay so these are these are my these are my learnings these are my learnings okay you have to be a lifelong learner stronger the will okay it's if you want to start a business or if you want to succeed in life it is not the money or it it is it is the will which you want to have okay it is stronger the will sooner the find out the way see i have a will stronger will that i have to make 50 lakhs 50 lakhs per year okay but i don't know how, i don't know the how process how i am going to do you know how i am going to do that i don't know okay uh so it is not the how you have to focus it is the why and what you want is to focus okay if i ask you a question like what is that goal you should answer the question now okay you should not think what is that goal okay if i ask you what is the goal and why you want to achieve you should provide an answer if you know what is your goal and why you want to achieve it the how is easier okay because you have a marvelous mind your mind can work even when you sleep okay your mind can find out answers it's just like driving a car okay you put a destination you put a destination you drive the car you are you are and you'll be talking to your friends and you'll be you'll be going through the road okay you'll be seeing the road you'll be seeing the road and like uh, you'll be you'll be on phone but still you'll be reaching the destination because your subconscious mind mind will drive to the destination okay the subconscious mind will take care of the acceleration braking and everything but you'll reach the destination okay so how is not important say for example i want to i want to achieve 1 crore rupees if you think that i want to achieve 1 crore rupees in one year it is possible don't think about how you are going to do it all you need is what you want and why you want stronger the why easier the how okay stronger the why easier the how so fortunately i have done i have did a goal setting i'll tell you what works for me and fortunately i have the habit of writing in the notebook that i want to earn 50 lakh rupees per year in 2004 I don't know what is goal setting at that point of time. Honestly speaking, I don't know what is goal setting. Okay, only in 2010, I learned it from Brian Tracy. I read uh, like I I attended his program and I know what is goal setting. What is the importance of goal setting? Which I had done it rightly at that point of time. Okay, now I'll tell you what. I want you to set your goals now. Okay, I want you to set your goals. So it is all about the winning attitude you have. Okay. so it it is not about your like even if you have even if you don't have money or even if you have less skill set all you need is what exactly you want decide that first have a definite goal the goal should have a deadline otherwise it's a dream My, so today activity is prepare a goal card okay just write down goal what is that you want what is it is that money or is that fame or is that a job but what is that you want just whatever you want like but try to be specific as well as measurable okay and attainable okay so fix this goal and have a deadline for this goal so that's the lesson which i like to share you okay write your decide what exactly you want if you ask it you will get it okay but you have to ask what you want okay decide your goal decide your goal and just write your goal on a daily basis so i'm going to give you two uh, activity for a mindset okay which helps me a lot if you do this activity for 30 days for this internships definitely you will be a better version of yourself Okay, I'll, I'll I guarantee you, if you do this activity on a daily basis for thirty days, you'll be a better version. The very first activity is you have to write your top ten goals. Okay, if you do that, you get one mark. Okay, write top ten ideas how to, how you are going to achieve that goal. If you do that, you get another one mark. Thirty minutes for workout. Okay, thirty minutes for workout. Like because your emotions is 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 important. 
okay if you are sad you will get, you'll be sad if you are happy you'll be happy what your emotions you will attract okay if you have scarcity you will be scarcity if you are poor you'll be poor again okay if you want to be rich if you want to become successful you have to break the emotions first okay find out what are the negative emotions you have and replace with the positive emotions in order to do that emotions can be changed by emotions okay it's from i learned it from tony robbins like when you go for like if you are sad you go for dance or you go for a fast walk or exercise okay that will change your emotions okay 30 minutes for workout you just walk 5000 or 7000 steps a day that will change your emotions by changing your emotions you can change your life okay if you have the past if you have negative thoughts which is inside or negative emotions which is inside it is just like drinking poison okay you drink poison you die okay and if you are anger anger is a negative emotions okay when you are anger like it is like having that negative emotions will uh, like it, it 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 will have it will develop a blood pressure for you okay blood pressure for you so like if you are anger it is not nothing to do with the other person what you are whom you are anger with okay it's just like drinking or drinking the poison and you are expecting others to die that will never happen okay you drink the poison you will die okay so 30 minutes for workout 15 minutes to meditate is very essential because it's just like clearing the catchy on the computer okay meditation is absolutely necessary if you do that you get two marks 10 minutes to visualize of achieving the goal that is very very important okay because any product in this world is created twice first in the mind then the actual product take place if you take taj mahal or anything any product okay if you want to design any product first it is conceived in the mind okay then the actual product take place if you if you if you didn't if you are if you didn't conceive in the mind first then there is no reality at all so you have to visualize what you want and what kind of home you would like to live what kind of car would you like to drive 10 minutes for visualization of achieving goal achieving your goals okay for if you do that you get one mark and 10 minutes to focus on the day plan okay on prepare the day plan before day before okay and just focus 10 minutes in the morning to what is it what is the activity which you are going to do today to do today, today for achieving that goals and two hours for learning and take notes okay that's you get two marks so you just uh, do this activity and post it on the facebook i'm i'm not suggesting to post it on the group you just please post it on the facebook page itself pantech.ai page or discord okay i'll share you the facebook page i'll go through your goals okay i'll go through your goals i would like to see your lot of goals because i if you don't have a goal card please set it today okay i'll uh, fortunately like uh, unfortunately like i don't have my goal card with me now if i'll show it tomorrow i'll show it tomorrow my goal card okay uh, i want i want you to fix the goal okay have a big goal okay not a small goal have a big goal think big and win big okay so these are the activity so if you love this if you love this just type love this on the chat box i would like to see your chat okay love this on the chat box i'd love to see your chat okay if you love this just type love this on the chat box really sorry like i don't know hindi okay i don't know hindi really sorry for that okay thank you so much uh thank you so much okay just thank you so much for your emojis okay for your heart emojis thank you so much so the next thing is like if you want to earn a passive income uh, we have an affiliate marketing okay where you can promote our courses and you can earn money passive income on it so if you want to sign up for that uh, like uh, the link is there on the chat box you can uh, fill the form okay and you can like you will have a webinar we will be inviting you for a webinar like how to how to earn passive income because i'll tell you why is why is it important money can solve 80% of the problem okay money can solve 80% of the problem you should stop earning during your college days itself okay you can easily design a product and you can sell all you need is how to market okay learn that skill marketing is very very essential okay how to market how you will market for your job it's very very essential how to market on linkedin is very very essential okay you should have multiple streams of income don't ever depend on one stream of income i strongly advise you don't ever depend on one stream of income okay if you are lucky if you are if it's it's i agree that you, if you go for job you will get an income that's okay but always have multiple streams of income because when when one stream of income stops okay you will have the other stream coming in only when you have the habit of developing multiple streams of income you will bring it you can create content okay for for earning passive income you can create a blog post you can have your own website you can write a blog post and you can generate money 
okay you can start a youtube channel on your phone like you can whatever you learn you share it on youtube channel you can earn money okay there are a lot of ways to do this okay today a lot of ways to do this earn income so i strongly advise you to have at, at least four or five multiple streams of income okay like having your own youtube channel having your own instagram or having post uses instagram wisely create content okay today's world is creators in an economy anyone who creates content owns the audience anyone who owns the audience is the king i have seen a lot of youtube influencers who is earning in crores you agree with the point just just step agree all you need is an investment of a mobile phone which you have already have it or a pc which you have already have it okay you need to create a content okay desire that desire your audience and create content for it definitely you will earn a passive income you can learn what you share okay even this embed systems you can you can you can create a video on embed systems whatever the things what you learn you can put a challenge of videos on your embed on your youtube or your instagram it's free the channel is free okay so today economy i want you i want you i want you to because if you want to open a channel before 10 years back like the sun tv or star tv like you need to you need to get a license from the government but today anyone can open youtube channel and anyone can share content and anyone can own the audience okay why not use it okay you just try to use this passive income and the next is the gold membership showcase so if you are looking for a job oriented training so we have a bundle of courses like nearly 25 plus courses which will help you to get the job very easily so i'm going to conduct a webinar for uh, one hour at 11:30 am tomorrow okay on zoom platform if you are interested in that you can sign up for this webinar on zoom platform like where i'll be showcasing the gold membership okay what are the benefits of achieving the show, uh, gold membership and what are the things which you have to learn for embed system design if you want to get a job in 90 days or 100 days what are the essential skills which you have to learn okay starting from embed c to embed system design or iot or pcb design even when you start from scratch you can still learn it and you can win the game the the game is on consistency okay the game is not like whether you have i'm not good in i'm not good in programming it's not like that game is on consistency if you are consistent enough on particular day you can learn anything i promise you can learn anything if you show consistency on a daily basis and you learn it from in a right way okay because i have done it i have done it i don't know programming at that point of time but i was able to build a business which is which made me 18 lakh in the first year and i made it for 40 lakh and i made it for 1 crore okay because i was a lifelong learner i learn it on a daily basis consistency is a game which will win you okay all you need is to maintain consistency everyone has a marvelous mind find out your inner strength and work on your inner strength okay so this will grip you so if you want to attend this webinar you can sign up for this webinar okay so the so i'll take the q and a now so this uh, i will set the timer for uh, i'll set the timer for uh, 30 minute 30 uh, 30 seconds okay okay so i'll take the q and a i'll take i'll take the q and a okay so if you have uh, if you have any questions like i will answer the questions on the chat box thank you so much for your time so we have only 351 people out of 1000 people because lot of people they came i'll i'll share with the legend lot of people they came only for the attendance okay for the certificate which is not uh, like which is not uh, is uh, which is not much more important the The much more important what is is knowledge okay the one who goes above like these are the 350 like 344 people's like who is who is still, like, st- uh, like who is staying for the end like who is going out of the comfort zone okay who is go for the extra mile will always win the game will always win the game okay will always win the game so i'll take i'll take this uh questions of the chat box okay i'm just taking questions only from the uh, only from this youtube uh so anyone who is on linkedin just jump into uh, youtube and you can post the questions karthik is asking it is necessary to join the live sessions karthik uh, you can watch it recorded like whenever you want you can watch it recorded whenever you want okay i looked the internet but it's not shown in my account uh, okay some in like it will take some time it will it will take some let me let me my team will check for you okay so if you want to contact us there's a contact us form in the description okay Uh, on the video there's a contact us form okay don't uh, don't try to call the mobile phone because there are a lot of 10000 people students has registered for this program and like there's a contact us form on the uh, video okay on the description menu so you can send a contact uh, contact us message with the, we'll reply within one day okay so knowledge is very useful for life. yes ajit is right 
yes you can attend this course without even buying the product yes mastermind you can attend this 30 days for free okay 30 days of course is free okay mastermind this answer is for mastermind 30 day course is for free is that clear if you do, if you're clear with the point you can just type clear in the chat box so so the hardware product the hardware see if you want to practice and I, I, I mastermind if you want to practice i want you to uh, purchase the hardware okay purchase the hardware because it's worth investing don't be cheap on the way to greatness okay only you you might have invested on a lot of lot of lot of things definitely you invest this it is not necessary you have to buy the hardware from us you can purchase from anywhere okay it, you can but i want you to practice that's all okay so so weird quarter like you, the session is free for 30 days on youtube okay it's free for youtube you can if only if you want that four courses you can enroll otherwise you can come and attend for free this is for uh, this is for the uh, weird uh, code okay weird code weird coder otherwise you just there is a con weird coder if you pay this 1187 rupees don't worry just there is a contact us form contact us form in the uh, description bo uh, description box okay uh, you just uh, i'll show that like on the youtube channel on the youtube video there is a contact us form you fill the contact us form my team will contact you within tomorrow okay within tomorrow this is for weird coder okay so this is for weird coder you just fill the contact us form my team will contact get you back devish uh, devish pandey like you can check the prices from amazon okay you can you can check it from amazon you, i just google it like you will get some shopping ads uh, and you find out the cheaper price okay but uh, the best price you can get this nuclear board from directly from moser but you have to pay the customs duty the landing cost will comes to 2000 2500 rupees 2000 rupees approximately 2000 rupees because you have to pay 30 percent landing cost and shipping cost will cost you like 1000 rupees from shipping if you want to ship the product from us uh this answer is for uh, for uh, devish uh, pandey like uh, like if you want to purchase directly from mouser.in or digiki.com the nuclear board will cost you only 1200 rupees okay 1100 rupees or 1200 rupees but you need to get the shipping cost will be added so again the 1000 rupees will be added so that will is 2000 rupees so the uh, you also have the customs duty which is 300 rupees okay 2300 rupees is the landing cost okay landing cost for you okay Pratik, like, give a brief of home automation development, microcontroller uses protocols. See, uh, Pratik, like, for microcontroller, home automation, we need just a Bluetooth, okay? And you can control to your mobile phone. Like, all you need is you need to interface the HC05 module with the uh, UART module on the STM32 board and attach three or four relays, okay? And you control, like, uh, you can control the home and you can, uh, like, you can control the light and the fan and everything, okay? So the price is sorry. The price is only triple nine. Sorry, the price is only triple nine plus GST. Okay, the price is only triple nine plus GST. So assignment, assignment. I'll repeat. Like there is a video on YouTube. Okay, there is a there is a. You just go for the uh, um, uh, Discord. There is a video. Uh, there is a video we have posted. All you have to is you have to download the software. Okay, STM thirty two cube software. Install the software because we need the software to practice. Okay. Karthik, uh, Karthik, uh, Karthik is telling like, I have taken the triple nine course. Whom should I contact? If you have doubts, don't find the contact us form. The contact us form in the uh, chat box. Okay. I asked my team to post the contact us form on the chat box. Okay. Karthik, the contact us form, form is, is in the description. See, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you like, uh, where did you ask the Q&A? Okay. If you have any doubts, where did you ask the Q&A? Uh, I'll show, uh, I, I ask kindly visit, uh, visit our community. Okay. I'll show you. I just go for hub dot, uh, hub dot warriors way dot in. Okay. Just go for hub.warriorsway.in and uh, like uh, when you purchase, you will get a link, invite link for this, okay, hub.warriorsway. Otherwise, this link will be on the course. You join, you will have an events here, like tomorrow 10.30 a.m. There's an event for AI data science, okay, and embedded system bootcamp, you have an event, okay, and uh, like embedded system bootcamp on evening, evening, tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. So these are the events which you can come and ask your Q&A, okay, this answer is for Karthikar. You can check out the past events here. There is no recordings for these events because these recordings for all these events will be available only for the only for the uh, gold membership. Okay, only for the gold membership, like Ember System Bootcamp and AI Bootcamp, like uh, the previous session events. Okay, these are all the previous session events. 
so this events will be like uh, embedded some 10 day live series we conducted 10 day live on zoom on only for the paid participants which is on the community so currently this community has uh, like almost like nearly around 10000 users 10355 members are there okay and we have uh, like uh, the total number of uh, uh, members okay so for all the live classes you have to come to this community and you have to attend the members is almost okay for the community this is for kothik the price is triple nine plus gst okay the price is triple nine plus gst for international students solomon like for international students let's 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 have we'll have a word with our team okay i'll, I'll update you tomorrow okay yes if you have uh uh stm uh, nitish uh, you, you can use the same board stm32 board but uh, you have to check out the right peripherals like uh, the registers will be different. You have to go through the data sheet, a uh, different data sheet of that board, okay, and that, and you can change, you can do it. You can, the coding is same. The way you have to do is also same. All you have to do is you have to change the da data sheet, okay, the rest is okay. Yes, uh, to use Zigbee protocol, you have to use AT commands, okay. Pratik, you have to, Pratik, um, uh, you have to use, for using the Zigbee protocols, you have to use uh, AT commands, yes. 80 commands and you have to transmit okay once you configure then you can use serial port so once you can use serial port to transmit the data okay the course link rrt rrt lv vlogs the course link once you purchase the course link it will be it will be automated like you will you'll get you have to learn you have to uh, uh log in and learn at pentax solutions okay i'll show you like where to where to log in the course okay just give me a moment so learn at pentax solutions okay learn at pentax solutions you can just log in here okay okay and you can access this course so currently like we have around um 46 000 students are using this course okay uh let me show this on the like how many how many students are using this course on live okay so the total number of users uh is for this course is uh like 46 000 five double nine students are using this course okay so two minutes ago or like Three minutes ago, login. Okay, eleven minutes, five minutes, five minutes ago, sign up. So seven minutes ago, five minutes ago. Okay, so these are the login which is currently the who are using this course. Okay, so you you can download the PPTs, you can download the presentations, source codes, and everything on this uh, platform, on this platform. Okay, any questions? So I so we want to. Uh, use the bare metal programming i never i will never recommend i never recommend i don't know like uh because go with the bare because you can't learn like uh, how you what works or how uh spy works how i2c works that is not uh that that uh, if you want to much more detail like how to how to how to program using registers then arduino is not best so only five days we are using esp32 okay the remaining all are based on the c language Okay, C language, it's a bare metal programming by using data sheets. How to write program using data sheets. Okay. The course is for uh Viraj, the course is for uh the course is uh, the course is for uh you have four courses, which is for 120 days. The certificate is three month certificate. Okay. Uh, it is yes, you can use it for polytron electronics because you have uh you have PWM, how to use PWM and you can learn the basics of UART and everything. Okay. Say for example, if you, you have ADC. Like if you want to interface sensors, uh, like you have ADC, like how to interface, uh, pro how to interface uh, sensors with the ADC, that coding is there and the explanation is also there and how to generate PWM is also there. Okay. But we don't have any motor controls, like specifically motor controls, like pulse, like, P P like PMS motor control or BLDC motor control. Okay. But we have the basics of uh, uh, PWM and PWM and basics of the microcontrollers. Okay. The SPI protocols and I2C protocols. So, and UART protocols, all these things. So total cost is triple nine plus GST. Gauri Shankar, total cost is triple uh, nine plus GST. Okay, but if you, I advise you to purchase the board also. Okay, board you can purchase the hardware. Okay, uh, Krishnan, not a problem. Like you just send us a contact form. You have to log in, log in to learn you, by using the same email ID which you purchase. You sign in, sign in for learn.pentaxolution.net. Okay, go for learn.pentaxolution.net. Otherwise, there is a contact us form in the YouTube description. You click the contact us form okay we'll be ensuring whether you reach us whether your course gets course get uh enrolled okay uh so you just wait for just wait krishna is just wait for one day okay just wait for one day like it will be enabled like uh, i i will ensure that the course is in en en enrolled on the 
within tomorrow live class okay so is what is the free free internship is for like 30 days it's for free okay i'll show you like what is the inter, what is the difference between free 30 days is free okay so you will get only this esg and iot which is the 30 day series whereas this will is a package of four courses okay embedded c esg and iot iot master class and arm cortex m4 it's not pcb design it's arm cortex m4 the package is the package is triple nine plus gst okay triple nine plus gst course recordings is lifetime and you have live sessions on every uh, live sessions on every week which can be uh, which where you can attend on the community okay on the community platform uh, and you can download the ppt's presentations you can download the source codes okay so that certificate you can get you will get as a three month internship certificate there you will get as a single single month so one month internship certificate okay that's the difference DJ, we don't provide any job opportunities, but if you go through the course, okay, job, uh, we don't provide any guarantee, but I have a lot of inquiries from LinkedIn for recommending, asking for, asking for, uh, for 10 or 15 peoples, but, um, I, I'm not giving any assistant job assistance, uh, because I don't have, uh, honestly speaking, I don't have time for it, but I have made this course based on my experience. Okay. On this 19 percent survey experience, how I designed these boards and how I like all this board, how, like how to, how to start from scratch. But I'm not giving any job opportunity, but we have the job oriented course, which has the resume building uh, and LinkedIn, how to market on LinkedIn and how to all these courses are there, like uh, the soft skills as well as the necessary skills for soft skills and all the coverage, like nearly like AI, how to use the AI on embedded systems and uh, how to uh, machine learning. Okay. How to use machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence on embedded systems. So that is the coverage of um, the complete package we have on gold membership. If you want to that course you sign up there's a zoom link there okay so that webinar is there on tomorrow 11 30 okay you can show up on the webinar lawrence the the, the hardware is stm32 f411 okay St, stm32 nuclear board it's it is stm32 nuclear board okay i'll, I'll show you like what is the what is the hardware which is required for this total for this course okay you have to purchase stm32 f411 nuclear board this one Okay, STM32 F411 nuclear board. This answer is for uh, Shashikant Verma. Offline workshop is not possible because we are too busy. Okay, uh, offline is we are, we are lot. We are getting a lot of inquiries on LinkedIn to do an offline workshop, but fortunately, like uh, unfortunately, like we don't have time for it. That's a problem. That's the thing. This is for Shashikant Verma. Okay. Notes the PPT will be shared. Uh, Sal the PPT presentation will be will be shared as a PDF format on the Facebook page. Okay, on the Facebook page, I want you to visit the Facebook page. Okay, after the session, I'll be sharing you. You can. I'll also send an email to you just visit the Facebook page. Follow the Facebook page. You will get the. Uh, you will have the uh, PPT as a PDF format will be there on the. You can download the notes. This answer is for. Uh, so dank. That just 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 you can download the 100 m interview questions okay you like it comment it and you share it repost it that will be helpful for other students okay this is for dank pool mass like like the notes will be shared on notes will be shared on facebook you will you will receive an email okay you will receive an email what are the basic what are the basic knowledge to learn embedded system to learn embedded system i'm electrical engineering background you need embedded C. Okay. You start with embedded C. Embedded C, but Python is also, it, it is also mandatory. Okay. What is the importance of bootload in a microcontroller C? What role does it place? Pratik, like what is the importance of bootload? See, bootload is a program which loads initially. Okay. From bootloader, you can redirect from anywhere. Okay. Say for example, like, uh, uh, like when, whenever you reset, whenever you reset the processor, the first code which loads into the memory, it's a bootloader. Okay. It's a bootloader program. From there, like uh, after the, you can run the application code, it is possible. Okay, uh, so or so th that is you can so that is the, that is a bootloader. So some of the microcontrollers, like they have the pre they have the bootloader. Okay, some you can you can also have a custom bootloader. That is also possible. Like especially like uh, we have done it on one uh, DSP processor like called Blackfin uh, BF532, where the 
processor does not have a does not have a uh, does not have a emulator okay so we load a bootloader like whenever they press whenever they press a reset switch with some switch like it will go for that bootloader and it will take the code from uart okay and it will flash it on the flash memory okay so uh, whenever the processor is reset the first program which is loaded in on the on the core is the bootloader I have MP11 protest for done project about history. Okay. Shashank, like CAN stands for control area networks. Control area networks, it's used for automotive applications. Okay. Uh, when you want to build an automotive applications like uh, infotainment, CAN and LIN uh, both are used for automatic infotainment. CAN stands for controller area networks. Okay. This is for Bharat. Sorry, Shashank. A Facebook page, uh, I'll share you to uh, Ironbird's Facebook page. I'll share you to on, uh, I'll share you on email. Okay. I'll share you on email, the Facebook page. I'll share you on email or I'll also put it on the discord. Okay. You, you can use by doing ID because you see Rajeshwari, like I want you to purchase the board because, uh, if when you only, when you purchase the board, you can do the project. Okay, but still, like uh, even if it is a compiler, we will accept it because if you don't want to purchase the board and if you are if you are able to do it with this compiler, uh, just till the compilation, like uh, we are okay with that. But you have to do the activity. Okay, you have to do the assignments. Okay, bus is a series of wire. Okay, mastermind bus is a series of wire. Okay. Okay, so is there is there any is there any questions? So just put put the questions on the chat box. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, put that on the chat box. Put. Okay, thanks for, can I load this uh, Android voice? Uh, James is asking like, can I load Android voice into STM that we have full of nuclear board? Uh, honestly, I have to check. Uh, this is from James. This is from James. Uh, can I load Android OS into STM 32 f 411 nuclear board? I have to check. I have to check. It's ARM Cortex M4 series, but I have to check whether it, uh, whether it, whether it is possible. You can load free autos. I have, we have done free autos. We have loaded free autos inside it. But definitely like it should support it should support but i have to check once okay honestly i have not i have not done before uh, but uh i have to check with the data sheet once okay but it needs an additional external memory to interface okay yes i see what can said yes can stm 32 f4 yes you can success success you can use it stm 32 f4 11 c i see you can use it you can use it no, if you see other than C, like C is, C is enough. Okay. Uh, for, uh, for shake C is enough. C is enough for the project. Okay. So purchase Giraj. Don't worry. Like there is a contest form in the, uh, in the YouTube, uh, on the YouTube description. Okay. You sign up, you put that on the contact contest form. My team will solve the problem within 24 hours. Okay. Uh, like we will go through the enrollments. Okay. We ensure that every for everyone the course is enrolled okay in tomorrow class i'll also show you a demo how to how to go through the videos on the portal okay if you have any doubts how to go through the videos on the portal okay certificate yes uh, see certificate will be provided only if you do the assignments okay assignments and the activities okay certificates you have to you have to do these assignments and the activities you need attendance for attendance for uh for 20 days as well as you have to do the assignments okay because previously like we issued a certificate of participation only based on attendance but a lot of people requested to give an internship certificate because that will be helpful for helpful for them to get a job okay so we cannot give an internship certificate without evaluating whether you have learned it or not so for that purpose like we use the assignment 
So if you do the assignments, definitely, and you have an attendance of 20 days, definitely you will get a 30 day internship certificate. If you know, uh, where, if you want to know like where you, where you have to download the certificate, like on the web, on the website, uh, we have an option called verify certificate at the bottom. Okay. If you go for our website, like there is an option called, um, pantaxsolutions.net. Okay. There's an option called verify certificate. You just click verify certificate. It will take in, it, it you will, you will get this page. Okay. You'll get this page where you can put this uh, email ID here. Okay. And you can search for the email ID. You'll get the certificate. If you, if you already have the certificate. Okay. So you can see the certificate is there. Like if, so you can click here, this is certificate of participation. Okay. So here now we are having the internship certificate. You can download the internship certificate from this place. Okay. At pantaxsolutions.net, you have option called at the bottom, you have an option called verify certificate. This will be uploaded only after completion. Okay. Not at this point of time, only after completions, only when you have attendance for 28 days, as well as you have to do the activities and assignments. Okay. So thank you so much uh, for your time. Is there any questions? So we have seven more minutes to go to close. So I'll be closing. So for the, for the international customers, I'll extend, I'll extend for the international customers. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the video will be available on YouTube. The video will be available for YouTube for three to five days. Okay. The assignments mastermind, the assignment is you have to install STM 32 cube ID for this is answers for mastermind. The assignment is you have to install STM 32 cube ID. It is already there on discord. Okay. You have to, you can click the discord YouTube video link. The video demonstrate how to install STM 32 cube ID. Just download the software from the STM website and you can install this. Okay. Vicky, you have to submit the assignment on discord. Okay. You have to, uh, I'll show you how to, how, how to submit the assignment on discord. Okay. Just give me a moment. So you have to you just go for this discord. Okay. The discord link is there. Okay. I'll share you the discord link on the page also. Okay. And you have to, uh, like, see uh, one of the, one of the, one of them is, uh, is, is, uh, has done the installation. Okay. Has submitted like Ranjit. Rajit is, uh, I think Rajit, this is Rajit has submitted the assignments. Okay. Question 32 cube ID installation completed. Okay. Like this at 847. So this like this, you have to submit this. Akshat has submitted. Okay. So you have to submit this assignments at on the discord. Okay. Is that clear? Anu, you have to submit the activities and assignments on Discord. This is what this answer is for Anu. Okay. Discord link. I asked my disc, uh, team to share the Discord link. Can you share the Discord link like on the chat box? Okay. Let me share that. Okay. Just give me a moment. Let me share the link. Okay. The, the link is there on the chat box. Okay. So thank you so much for your time. So we have only uh, four minutes to go. Okay. If you want to enroll, like you can enroll this course. Okay. Because this offer will not be valid, will not be available for any time, anywhere. You will not get this three month certificate. Okay. So you will get like single month or single month internship certificate that is possible, but three months internship certificate you will not get Okay, from starting date and ending date. You will not get. Okay. So if you want to enroll for the three month certificate, you can enroll for this, enroll for this, uh, uh, core for this internship. So it will close in four minutes. Okay. After that, I will never open the door. I have some of the people are requesting for opening the door for today. Okay. On the chat box, on the chat box, as well as on the, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, so like, but for international, inter international students, the, the room will be open. Okay. It will extend for one more day. But for India, like the room will be closed for within, uh, within like three minutes. Okay. Three minutes. So thank you so much for your time. See you tomorrow. Okay. So see you tomorrow. Like 
thank you so much see you tomorrow until then bye bye take care so if you want to enroll please enroll within three minutes of time okay so thank you so much i'm closing i'm signing off i'm closing the live okay thank you